Hey everyone, I'm Sean Ganner with Simplify Accounting and I get this question all the time. Should I lease or buy this vehicle or piece of equipment for tax purposes? You know, what's what's better for taxes? Well, the focus here is on small corporate business owners, but if you are not that, then it may still be applicable to your situation. If you don't have a corporation, the tax rates will just be different. Before getting into this, just make sure that you're what you were buying will be used primarily for business as there are tax consequences when you buy business assets in a corporation and they're used personally. I'd like this to be as realistic as possible. So I got this term sheet from the local Toyota dealership. This is for a 2025 Toyota Tundra Limited off-road that's listed for $79,166 plus tax. The term sheet shows a different interest rates offered for up to five years for a lease or seven years for a loan. These are bi-weekly payments with a maximum annual 24,000 kilometers that can be driven under the lease option. You'll see an LEV price under the lease option. This is the lease end value. And that would be what you'd need to pay if you wanted to buy the vehicle when the lease is over. This would also sometimes be called an option purchase price. I've crunched the numbers, but first I'd like to mention that to keep calculations simple, I've made some basic assumptions like ignoring sales tax. I'm also using an Alberta and BC 11% small business business corporate tax rate. So let's dive into these calculations. If you look at the summary, you'll see that in this case, leasing is the most expensive option. Under a five-year term, you'll pay close to $103,000 if you lease versus around 98 grand if you buy the vehicle and finance it with a loan versus around 79 grand if you just pay cash. And so if you have the cash and you have nothing better to do with it, might as well pay cash for it. How did I come up with these numbers? Well, it's really simple and you can do these calculations yourself based on whatever term sheet you're given. If it's a bi-weekly payment, you'll have 26 payments in a year because there's 52 weeks in a year. So 26 is half of that. Multiply this by the number of years the loan or lease is being financed over and you'll get the total cost. So in this example, for under the finance option, for a five-year loan, multiply the $753 payment by 26 by five years, and it is $97,890. Under the leasing option, when you do this, you'll get the total payments, but then you'll also have to add in the lease end value or the option purchase price, assuming that you'll buy it out to come up with the total cost for a comparison. How much do you save in taxes under each option? Well, it's pretty comparable for a lease versus a loan. They're both at around 11 grand in tax savings at that 11% tax break. You save less with a cash purchase, but you also pay 20 grand less. So don't forego that cash purchase just to save taxes. These tax savings, they don't come in the first year that you buy the vehicle. So I've broken this out even further to show the tax deductions over 10 years for both a vehicle and for a piece of equipment using the five-year term rates provided by Toyota. And the reason I'm breaking this out with a vehicle versus a piece of equipment is because they have different capital cost allowance or depreciation rates. In this case, a vehicle like a Tundra would be depreciated for tax purposes at 30%, whereas most pieces of equipment would be depreciated at 20%. It really depends on what you're buying. You can talk to your accountant, but for freight trucks, heavy duty equipment versus say a laptop or a side-by-side, -side, there, there may be a different rate that applies to what you're buying versus what I'm showing you here. Ultimately, it doesn't matter that much because you will get those tax savings over the life of that asset. So if you dive into these calculations, you'll see that under the lease option, you get to deduct the full lease payments of whatever you are leasing. And sometimes dealerships will tell you, hey, you get more tax savings from leasing this, so you should lease this. That's not necessarily true. Sure, you can fully deduct those lease payments, whereas with a loan, you can only deduct the interest, but you can also depreciate the asset. And then with cash, there's no interest to deduct, so you're just depreciating the asset. But if you look at these calculations for a vehicle at least, you get um, a higher deduction. And these amounts here, they're deductions. They're not tax savings. The total tax savings at the bottom in green there, but these will be the deductions. You could multiply those deductions by 11% or whatever your tax bracket is. Your 
a sole proprietor and you're personal, you don't have a corporation, you'd have a different tax rate. And then that's the tax savings you'd get per year. So in this case, at $29,908, 11% of that is just over three grand. That's your tax break in the first year under the loan option versus the lease options a lot less than that cash options a little bit less than that so if you look at these calculations and these cases over the first couple of years you get the most bang for your buck on the loan option and the cash options better than lease option as well but again ultimately you'll be able to deduct the full cost of whatever option you choose the tax savings at least when a small corporation is involved aren't huge so don't make the decision solely based on tax savings just so you know these numbers will be different depending on the capital cost allowance rates and current rules in some cases a half year rule may apply reducing the tax break in that first year in other cases there may be acceleration rules allowing more to be deducted in the first year just depends on the the legislation at the time you also have to be careful because there are a lot of cases where a vehicle may fall under the definition of a passenger vehicle in which case your deduction would max out at 36 grand regardless of what you paid for the vehicle which is only around four grand in total tax savings for example if you buy a hundred thousand dollar suv unless it's used to transport goods equipment or passengers for business and is used 90% or more for business, then it would be considered a passenger vehicle and you would not be able to deduct that full 100 grand. You'd be capped out at the 36 grand. That's a huge difference. In the description below, I'm going to provide a link that shows you the definitions of a passenger vehicle so you can check that out for your situation. So what else should you consider when looking at leasing, buying, or paying cash for something. Well, a couple items would be, how much can you afford? Do you need this vehicle or piece of equipment? Will it help you grow your business or have any kind of return on investment? Or is it just going to be a drain on cash? Are there decent, cheaper, used options. If you go the used route, you need to consider higher repair costs. If you have a bunch of cash, but have other higher interest rate debt, then you may wanna look at paying down that debt and financing this purchase instead as a way to lower your overall interest expense. Also, if you lease, then you should understand what you're getting into. Read the lease agreement. How many kilometers a year can you drive? What are you responsible for? If there's a few tiny dents or rock chips, are you going to need to pay for these to get fixed? I'm personally not a fan of leasing because you just don't have control over the asset you don't own it, but some people want a new vehicle every couple of years, in which case leasing might be a better option. Bottom line, you'll save more taxes on the more expensive option, but saving a bit in taxes isn't worth paying more. If you need a piece of equipment or a new truck for reliability or to grow your business, then sure, buy it before your year end rolls around so you can get the tax break now instead of next year. But if you don't need it, then don't buy it just to save taxes. It would be way better to invest and grow that money instead. I hope this was helpful if there's any specific content you'd like me to create, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time.